All right, all right, all right. We are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. It's Friday at noon and time for our live stream. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. D. I mean, afternoon. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Michelle? Doing awesome. All right. So we are cranking up the numbers. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's time for our Facebook Live. All right, so this is streaming to our um, Facebook, of course, uh, Facebook business page, which is Michelle Rhodes Online. Um, I'm gonna go on my phone and see if I can share it to your page if you'd like, Dr. D. Oh, sure, that'd be awesome. Okay, uh, Nursepreneur Nation. So hello, family. And then also our LinkedIn family, we are streaming too. So. Y'all come on in. We're going to get ready to get started in just a moment as soon as I share this out. Michelle Rhodes online and we'll get the party started. <laughs> I'll um, just chime in real quick while I do this. If you could let us know where you're located. Oh, sure. So I am um, a native New Yorker. <laughs> so outside of my West Indian roots, when I got here, I came straight off the, the plane to New York. <laughs> oh, awesome. <Yeah>. Awesome. <laughs> so um, I'm sorry. I was having the people drop in the chat where they're located as well. So sorry about that. That's what I get from all, most of my tasking. But I would love, since I can't seem to share this out, I've got post. <laughs> no problem. Um, for you to share with the audience a little bit about you. Uh, your nursing journey and about your business. We'll talk a little bit about your business after that. Okay, sounds good. So I've been an, in nursing for 20 years. Um, I started off as an LPN. So in high school, I did a vocational program and I was able to get that done by the time I graduated high school. Yes. And then I went straight into a BSN program as a traditional BSN student. And um, so I've been an RN for 16 of those 20 years. Um, so my passion in nursing is, um, is OB, right? Never wanted to do anything else, <laughs> all about mamas and babies. And I finally got my chance to do that in, you know, various roles. And then after I got my master's, um, I went into, um, the funny thing is I, I did my master's in education, nursing education. Cause I was like, I want to teach, I want to teach. And then somewhere along the line, you know, um, I guess the leadership where I was working saw something else that I didn't see and uh, offered me my first leadership position. And then it was like, take it right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and but I never forgot my, my, my underlying passion for education. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I went through my various leadership roles from, uh, I guess you would call it the equivalent of an assistant nurse manager all the way up to director. And um, throughout that journey, I was also doing my PhD. Okay. And that really reconnected my, me to my, my love for research and academia. So I came back full circle, and now I'm an assistant professor of nursing. Um, that's the, that's the, uh, the nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, um, and, I, that's and I bet that doesn't even, like, you know, tell half of the story, because right. that's an amazing journey. So Thank kudos you. to you, first Thank of all. Just making that journey, completing the journey, mm -hmm. being an example after the journey. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you. We highly commend you for that. Mm -hmm. But I would love for the people who, because, you know, we have a lot of different um, nurses in our audience. It might mm -hmm. be nurses who are at the LPN level, nurses who might be new in leadership, because I heard mm -hmm. you mention a transition to your first um, leadership position. It, nurses who might be in school, DMP, right. PhD. You know, do you want to really just kind of talk about that journey and any tips for them, no matter where they are in that journey? I think that's an amazing. Sure. Um, we know that it's going to be challenging. Right. So nursing is not easy. <laughs> you know, when you're in school and you're studying um, to just get through, uh, we know it's not easy. But then there are additional pressures that um, that minority nurses in particular have to face along the journey, whether it's somebody in your ear telling you you're not gonna make it mm -hmm. or just feeling kind of isolated because you're one of a few uh, black faces in all levels, um, you know, it's that much more difficult. And so I think that the, the main thing I wanna leave with people today is if this is your passion, whether it's getting past nursing school or getting to the next level with an advanced degree or climbing the career ladder, if it's something that you're passionate about, 
you know, you got to have that tunnel vision to just go for it. And things are going to come and knock you off your path. I've had stops and starts plenty. <laughs> you yeah, know, <laughs> it, it, it has to be something that is um, partially an internal motivation. And then you have to uh, look outside for sources that can develop you. Right. So the, the, this mindset that you have to do everything by yourself, we got to stop that. And, and nurses tend to fu function in chaos you know, under pressure, trial by fire, that whole thing. Well, and it's not necessary. You know, there are people who've been where you're trying to go. Um, you know, that's why I, you know, I started to form these partnerships with you, Michelle, because I'm like, well, she's the expert in, you know, growing a business. Why am I trying to figure it out on my own? Um, rely on each other and 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 stop holding and hoarding information. You know, we need each other, especially since there's so few of us. So which is how my business got birthed <laughs> just because I didn't see it. And I was like, yeah. we, need, we need a resource. Let's build a platform. So I get it. Totally. <laughs> oh, I thank you for that. I hope that, you know, cause you dropped a lot of gems in there. Cause I really wanted to stop you when you talked about, you know, what do you see? Like we mm -hmm. always say, you got to kind of see it to become it. Mm -hmm. um, so the lack of representation. And I think that's been a, Mm -hmm. source for you to really focus on and see how can you help and what can we create, which hence near your business and you're creating, you know, structures and partnerships. But do you want to speak on that at all about the lack of black faces in nursing leadership? Yeah. Um, so I think that it's time, um, especially with everything going on and um, in terms of the pandemic and realizing what a resource nurses truly are. Um, it's time for organizations to pour back into us, right? So we have to hold them accountable and have those difficult conversations with our leadership to say, okay, uh, we're at a turning point in this country. What is our organ? Where in history does this organization want to want to land in right. terms of being on the right side or the wrong side? Are we going to be progressive? Are we going to increase our efforts for in, uh, inclusion and diversity, um, or are we just going to carry on with the status quo? Um, we, as the, the professionals that are already in the rooms, have to reach back and pull other people behind us as well and show them that it's possible. Um, and I think that's through mentorship, through sponsorship. You know, if you're in, like I said, information sharing um, and being transparent with the pitfalls and the challenges, you know, because like I, I, I think I posted the other day, I really I didn't know what I was doing. You know, when I got my first role, somebody saw something in me and that person, although they were a sponsor, they weren't much of a mentor, right? So she pushed me and got me the job, but the development as a leader wasn't there. And right. so I you still had to find that. Yeah, you have to, you know, so that's what I was saying in terms of having that drive. It's necessary, but those of us who are already there need to also reach back and pull others along. Yeah, and then I have to take their part in yeah. developing these leaders. You can't just have them out here flailing and then reprimand them when they fail, right? So, <laughs> so many moving pieces to that, you yeah. know, a mentorship and the lack of thereof, mm -hmm. lack of thereof, mm -hmm. uh, which I've seen quite a few movements lately <clears throat> to really hone in on that, the mentorship piece for mm -hmm. um, black leadership in nursing. So I wish, I just wish there was a way that, you know, and I know <laughs> it's a dream yeah. that we could all come together. It was a big melting pot of, of mentors ready for mm -hmm. nurses. I think that is one of the early things that we can do early on. And that goes even way back. I know one of my students, she's, you know, working with the youth. It, I think it really goes back to yeah. I almost the elementary school, you know, yeah. got to start there. Yeah. Because and I when people call me from elementary schools to do a career fair, I'm there because they need to see it from that early. See, I had examples. I had my mom who was a registered nurse, right? I had my aunt, you know, but some people come from families where they, they don't see that representation. You know, right. they don't have that motivation. It, I also wanted to mention that schools, colleges of nursing have to do a better job too in terms of increasing their efforts to bring the representation in from the entry level. You know, they are not doing a good enough job with um, recruiting and or retaining um, black and brown um, nurses and students. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> do what we can in our space. <laughs> I know it is a big, you know, it is a concern. It is affecting um, 
the profession because of the lack of representation. The voice is mm -hmm. not there. I think it is a missing voice, but then it continues. And so mm -hmm. we got to break the, break the cycle somewhere mm -hmm. because if people never figure out where to start, it just continues. So mm -hmm. that's my concern. We were having this same chat um, on Twitter. We got, I don't know if you're on Twitter, if you are, mm -hmm. let's connect. But there's a whole thread of this going on over there as well. So I have to do what my Twitter life. I have an account. <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm going to do that because you're the you're one of a few people who have told me got to get on Twitter. So let me do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not on there a lot, but yeah. I do check you know certain threads, and I do know that there's you know uh, some strong voiced nurses that yeah. you know keep the threads going. So yeah, yeah at least now it's ta it's ta it's being talked about, and so I think that's the starting point is that. Awareness is there. People are saying, hey, we do need to address the diversity in our leadership. Where do we start? Mm -hmm. Then we go into mentorship. Yes, schools of nursing. And then, yes, what do we do in the employer space and uh, leadership development programs? So mm -hmm. it all works together. But mm -hmm. hopefully we'll find the, the cohesion that we can just yeah. step it through from beginning to end, you know? Yeah, that's our prayer for our profession. So thank you for bringing that out. Um, anything you want to just address before we move into entrepreneurship? Because I know that's your baby, <laughs> in, uh, the, the scholarly realm. <laughs> so I just, you know, the 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 fallout from these issues that we're having with the lack of representation, definitely we're seeing now highlighted by COVID is those health disparities. And so um, that's a whole nother topic um, that we could get into. But um, for lack of time, <laughs> I just, you know, the same thing is that... Um, um, our, our lawmakers, our executive leadership in the hospital settings, our right. schools of nursing, we all have to um, infuse at every level and every turn, you know, um, having those difficult conversations and, and changing the framework and how we approach care um, and how our providers view their patient population. Ooh. bias and racism. So nice dancing on the nerve right there. Lot. There's so many levels to this thing. Um, and we're 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 chipping at the iceberg, but I believe that we will get there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because that leads into a whole nother realm as far as <laughs> provider, um, um, unconscious bias, mm -hmm. microaggressions, just the lack of um being able to relate, mm -hmm. you know, and relay some of those important messages, and we've seen that happen here lately. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could go on and on about that one. So hopefully this at least brought the awareness out to the field, you know, out here um, for nurses who can maybe be encouraged to do the connections, to make the connections and have the conversations and then get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you transition into nurse entrepreneurship? I know you do a lot with that mommy baby experience. Mm -hmm that you bring in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I first saw you, I think on LinkedIn, you were really, you know, discussing the disparities for the maternal health crisis for black women. Mm -hmm. um, and now that's kind of morphed into some more offerings. So tell us about your entrepreneurial journey. Right. So where it started, honestly, was um, while I was doing my, my um, PhD um, research, which incidentally was on um, the experience of being black and female, when becoming a nurse executive. So in my journey, I've had the fortune of working with some black and brown um, women who were in that executive seat. Completely rare. Wow. Uh, and so I thought it was a message to me, okay, since you're on this leadership journey, why don't you study them since this is where you're you know, trying to go? Right. And so um, in talking to them and recognizing the, the issues and how, they felt just like I did, how they didn't have any guidance or training. I said, you know what? Um, I want to create a space that is specifically geared toward developing Black nurses, especially in that leadership space. And so that was the creation of the League of Extraordinary Black Nurses as a nonprofit okay. and nursing um, membership organization. Um, and it just kind of took off from there, you know. Um, but then I also had the passion, like you said, about the disparities uh -huh. and um, saw myself also wanting to be an advocate and offer more of a personal interaction with nurses who want um, an individual attention and development. So I uh, created um, my business, my other business, which is um, Dania's Joy LLC. And um, so we focus on three things with that organization. 
uh, with that business. It's uh, leadership development through mm-hmm. individual career coaching. Um, then there is parent empowerment through uh, providing education and awareness um, in terms of pregnancy, what to expect. And then also with, with the caveat that with black and brown faces, we need that little extra attention to know what questions to ask when you're interacting in that space. You know, basically what to expect when you're expecting while black. Okay, so, <laughs> and then the third arm. <laughs> is, Which I'm sure we all read that book. <laughs> you know? Okay. That's why I'm the, laughing. I was like, need, I'm not, but right, I get it. The version 2021, right? Um, with that caveat. <laughs> Um, too bad the title's already taken. So, working with organizations to also um, help them, um, one with the maternal health disparities, but also recognizing the issues that we're having with underrepresentation and helping to develop the leaders within their organizations. So, that's where we are today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How do we do it all? First of all, before we even oh, like, no. <laughs> like even before I even get, even talk about that role, which is monumental, and it, you know, again, applause because it is a, a crisis, another crisis. But how do you do it all? I mean, assistant professor, and then of course you have your consulting business, mm-hmm. uh, speaker, author, trainer. And then you have a nonprofit as well. Like, yeah. any tips for those people? Like, my kind um, of people. Who start early and work late? No, I, you know, <laughs> there has to be balance. There has to be, no. Um, because that whole mindset about grind, 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 and then no team, no sleep, mm-mm, it does not work. That is I'm done problem. with it. Yes. Burnout. Um, I take it one day at a time. Honestly, I, you know, I have to stick to a schedule. These days, if it's not on my planner, I can't remember. So it got to go on the, the calendar. Absolutely. Um, you got to be really organized. That's all I have to say. And I didn't consider myself to be somebody who was, who was super, super organized, but I had to get organized real quick. <laughs> um, so any automated systems that can help you mm-hmm. if you're an entrepreneur, um, I use, uh, I don't know if you want me to say what I use, but I um, I use Dubsado to handle my client bookings. Um, I use you know, I do my own graphics sometimes. Some I did hire someone to do my websites and some of my official um, yeah, um, things. But a lot of my day-to-day posts, I do myself in Canva. You know, so you start to, you know, as nurses, we wore many hats. So you can, now I'm a graphic designer. I'm the, I'm the CEO, <laughs> you know. But hopefully as I'm scaling I'll be able to hire and outsource and, you know, that's take the, the heat off of yourself. You that's know, you the, stay organized. That's the back of you right there. Delegation. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's Defense it. For delegation. And this, we're going we're gonna to make that your middle name. You have three D. <laughs> but yeah, right. I, I, I wholeheartedly, and my students will tell you, like, I am like, you know what? You need to know the process, but then outsource it. There's no way you can do it all. So I'm glad you brought that up about delegation, automation. I just did last year. So, yeah, I use the same system. It just automatically sends out contracts, payments, and they go right to my calendar. Hey, book your first call. So they're ready to go by the time we meet. So that's important. And then the calendar. Mm-hmm. Um, for a while. And a lot of people will tell you who work with me, like I wasn't even used, I just knew what I needed to do for the day. I mm-hmm. kind of went by the day yeah. uh, and checked off a to-do list until that did not work anymore. So mm-hmm. um, I just encourage anyone who's listening to have, of course, the system that works for you. But now that I know my day is planned, boom, 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 that's it. And then I close my computer. Like I, I'm over it. Yeah. yeah. Grind is over. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and don't I even change my whole business plan. Like even my business plan is not gonna be like all the time. It's gonna be what's gonna stand the test of time. And I can tell it. And don't be afraid to adjust stuff. So if some doesn't work, it's or it's not working, switch it up. You know, pivot that that word was golden for 2020. Pivot. Absolutely. (laughs) It taught us how to do that beautifully, right? Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, um, I wanted to and I invited you on because I was so excited about, first of all, our collaboration. So, yay. Yeah. Um, that was the start of all of this. Just talking about how could we help each other, uh, our, both our organizations. Of course, I had the CE provider. I was able to extend the opportunity to have uh, your course um, 
approved and you'll be the instructor for your new course. So I'm excited for you to tell the people about that. But just a wonderful, you know, synergy that we have. And I'm just excited to see uh, where your course goes. I think it's wonderful and it's long overdue. I'm like, where was this? Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Like all these years. So now we are having that conversation. Like, how do you navigate leadership? How do you navigate through the leadership journey as a nurse of color or a minority nurse. So do you want to tell a little bit about your course, what's coming up with the masterclass? It's a three hour masterclass at the end of the month. Sure. Um, I think it's long overdue. Thank you so much. And yes, that, that just, it made my day. I was like, okay, sign me up, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for approving these contact hours because it was something that I really wanted for um, my attendants to have that extra added benefit. So this is awesome. Um, the course uh, or the masterclass is called the Seacole Effect, right? And it's a, a what's it entitled a Career Ma Navigation Masterclass for Minority Nurses in Leadership. Why did I name it the Seacole Effect? Well, Mary Seacole, um, for those who um, may not know, um, was a nurse who was kind of a black nurse, um, and she was um, in the same, uh, I guess you could say, era as our um, pioneer, Miss Florence Nightingale. However, you don't hear her name um, because obviously, you know. Yes. <laughs> right. right. Um, well, but well, what happened, so. yeah, what happened with in her story is that she was very well-traveled, you know, had been implementing her knowledge of, of um, um, medicinal, naturalistic and medicinal um, uh, practices in terms of caring for the sick, to travel all over the world. And when uh, the war, uh, the Crimean War happened, she approached the office um, to have them send her there to help on the battlefield that she was denied. And so Miss Nicole said, okay, there's no, you know, there's no seat for me at this table. I'm gonna bring my own chair. So she funded her own trip and was very instrumental in that same war that we've heard of multiple times about Nightingale. Absolutely. Um, and um, only just maybe recently within the last 20 years has received her flowers, where now she has a monument in England. Um, yeah. in honor. And so um, that history is never taught to us. You know, I had to go back and look for it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so in that same spirit, you know, that's where the name, the Foucault effect came from. Because I love it leaders, we are pioneers, we are trailblazers in our own right, and even within the nursing profession, um, we deserve our recognition and our honor. So um, the course is basically designed for those who are aspiring nurse leaders or current new nurse leaders who are looking for that um, a little bit of career development that is geared to them, right? The pitfalls, the challenges um, that they're going to face uniquely um, to, to that are unique to black and brown nurses mm -hmm. um, and how to overcome them. Because I don't want to just spend my the whole time talking about the, the, the challenges, right? So what are some of the strategies? And the strategies that I'll talk about are from my own experience or from those who I know who are experts in the field and also incorporating my research. So my research findings are definitely going to inform a lot of what we talk about but it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun because um, <laughs> um, you know I infused a lot of different things from my my personal life into my dissertation. So there's a little bit of music in there, you mm -hmm. know, typical person. It's gonna be very interesting curriculum, and but we're gonna learn a lot. And um, so it's three hours um, dedicated to developing um, my black and brown nurse leaders, and I'm really looking forward to it. So in the in the registration fee. Um, it covers your obviously your registration, and now we've got three contact hours approved <laughs> and online. And um, we also um, you'll get a, a nice custom journal oh, so that you can document your goals and keep you know keep track of your thoughts and a beautiful e workbook. I'm so proud of it. You know, oh. I've been tweaking and tweaking and working. It's going to be awesome, so that you can follow along with the course specifically, um, you know, by topic and everything, and it has all the activities for the course in it. So it's going to be awesome. Um, and so if you'd like to register, um, should I tell the people how to do that now or? Sure, sure. I'll put it in the chat as well. Okay, awesome. So you can go directly to my website. I am Dr. D, 
That's I A M D O C T O R D. So spell it out. Um, dot com, and it pops right up um, when you enter the website. So you just click from there and it'll take you to um, the course description and the fees and all of that. Um, yeah. So look yeah. at those oh, awesome. take advantage of that. Love it, love it, love it. But what I was going to stop you on, of course, we know that nursing is evidence-based, everything is that. But that was really what captured me when you submitted it for approval. Mm -hmm. um, all of the research that you were able to combine, your review, but who knew that there was so much research already done on this matter? I was like, people have already been studying this and wanting to get it out. So, I mean, I was like more than happy to approve it because it really how can we amplify even the research that's already been done? Does that make sense? Like yeah. it's sitting there. And so now you're able to pull that out and showcase that yeah. as well. So we, we I, it. And, and, and honestly, there are still some gaps, um, but the research is there. We know the issues, right? We right. Know the <laughs> but, you know, I guess it's just for, because we feel, I feel yeah. like we know it, we live it, right? Like yeah. we know what it feels yeah. like to have either racism at work. A lot of them has, have, have dealt with that. I've been bullied at work. Um, because I wasn't in my zone as well, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know it, so we've lived it. But mm -hmm. then to see that research, I was floored by all of that. I, mm -hmm. I really will say that that I didn't realize there was so much our research already done. You kind of feel like you're living it, and nobody understands. Yeah. But now that we're talking about it, it's come to the forefront, and now you've compiled the literature. Mm -hmm. I'm like, baby, <laughs> come on, bring it, teach the people. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, that's my slogan. Yeah, everybody, hashtag teach the people. I need y'all to put that in the chat. <laughs> I love it. Teach the people. Yeah, one of my coaches said that. That thing just stuck with me. I don't know why. Right. That's my theme for the year. Hashtag. That's my hashtag, y'all. Those yeah. who follow me, they know I love hashtags. <laughs> I make them creative and funny. But yeah. this year is teach the people. Yeah. And so, whether uh, how we need to teach them, it will be taught. That's right. That's right. We're gonna That's get it up there, it. and Absolutely. because it's very nice, and it was very sobering to see that validation of our experience, right? So nobody can tell our experience like we can. Nobody can say it like the professor can. Yeah, again. <laughs> and so, you know, when I was listening to these women who, well, I, I call them unicorns because you, you I, I can't believe in my own lifetime I was able to be under their some of their um, leadership, but like hearing their stories and even though they got there they had the same challenges that i did i didn't feel so lost or you know like it was my fault anymore right it took the weight off of me because it the, the hearing their stories validated my experience and knowing that they were able to overcome it was like oh, okay i got this you know there's nothing i can't do um and so we need to share our stories more often um, this power in 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 your individual story, and a lot of times your story isn't just for you, right? It's to empower the oh, next yeah. person. So you've gone through something that can help another person avoid it, absolutely. You know, and we have to keep sharing our stories. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If you, we had met like when I was doing the book anthologies, but every year, like for the past four years, I would do uh, a group of nurses who wanted to write their story on a particular topic. But I'm sitting here thinking about like, ah, it just sounds like another anthology because we would pick, pick a theme. And so it was a chance for people to tell their stories, especially black nurses who sometimes don't get a chance to. Mm -hmm. That's, again, why I'm yeah. in business, to have a platform for black nurses. But I do attract black nurses, although my platform is for everybody. Uh, that's who I attract. That's fine. But it's a way to get us visible and say, hey, we have a voice. We have a purpose. We have a reason. It's not just to be stuck, you know, behind the, the walls of the hospital forever. If that's not where we truly thrive. Mm -hmm. And I knew that wasn't my case for, for years. So anyway, with all that being said, I just wanted to say that, you know, if, if we have to talk about the anthology, it would be a great one because I know that there are stories that are untold. And that's why, again, I was so floored because I think for the longest when it comes to that type of issue that you do feel alone. So to yeah. see the research and the validation or even read a book, if we should do the anthology, like it will, you know, open your eyes and say, you know what, I'm not alone. So absolutely, yeah, yeah. let's talk about that because that, that's <laughs> something that I really want do want to do. Um, is uh, an anth something like an anthology. So yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. talk. <laughs> yeah, you've done quite a few. I think we're out over a hundred nurses, you know, self-published authors. So I'm excited. And I took that experience and moved it into magazine 
world, the magazine world, which is real quick, selfish, shameless plug. Uh, Ooh, the first, <laughs> yes, you know it, right? <laughs> but yeah, no, but really, that's where I took that. Like, you know, how can we go bigger? Like, I'm always trying to grow. How can we go bigger? How can we let the world know that we're here? Um, and so, the platform I wanted to build is a media you know, outlet for nurses and it can be nurses of color, but, you know, it's for nurses, especially when it comes to business and how can we um, leave our legacies. So I transitioned over into the magazine. So we have the first black wellness magazine by black nurses um, launching in, gosh, 12 days. <laughs> I'm so proud of y'all. So that thank it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they're at the printer. They go out next week. So the people who, and this is just kind of FYI to give y'all an update who are supported. Let me first of all say thank you. Uh, gosh, we exceeded our pre-sale goals. So thank you all who pre-sold and they will be shipped out next week. So you all who got early bird, you will be getting your magazines very early as a gift, as a way to say thank you from mm -hmm. us. Um, and then we'll do another shipment on the 20th. So those people who ordered after Christmas won't get theirs until after the 20th. Just FYI for those people out there wondering, when am I going to get my magazine? Um, and then we will be having a digital party on the 20th over at Color of Wellness uh, mag Magazine, the Facebook page. So, awesome. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Let me put that in here real quick. Any parting words? Um, I just appreciate your time. This has been a wonderful conversation. And I thank you. Opening up the the, the path for black women, black women in leadership, black nurses in leadership, um, and then the scholarly piece. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me and, uh, you know, allowing me to share a little bit about myself, my journey, and um, my, my entrepreneurial um, endeavors. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, if you're out there and you're thinking about, you know, pursuing leadership or pursuing something in entrepreneurship, Go for it. Do your research, you know, of course, um, and really search your heart to see if this is, you know, what's right for you. But there are so many resources available now that we are trying to put into your hands, um, whereas maybe we didn't have that same experience. So take advantage of what's available to you now. Um, definitely connect with Michelle. Keep, keep. I'm gonna keep connected to you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, uh, because I just admire you so very much, so very much, and um, appreciate you for how you've assisted even my journey. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the masterclass. It's on January 30th. Um, it's three hours. Starts about 11 a.m. And if you're interested, you know, follow the link and and go on and sign up. And I look forward to having you there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to read one comment. Well, I have quite a few. But there was one early on when you said West Indies. Someone said, I thought it was Jamaican, but I knew should have known or it was something like that. So that was funny. <laughs> Do you want to give a shout out to, to that part of your fam? Oh, absolutely. All oh, big up my Jamaican massive. Yes. <laughs> you know, we run things. Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Y'all know that's my second yeah. home, right? <laughs> so we have to travel there sometime together. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. I've been five times. I'm ready to go back another five. Yeah, like that is, too. you know, when we could travel, that's like my second home. I don't want to go anywhere else. Someone is saying, let's go to Dubai. Let's go. You're like, ah, I just want to go yeah. to Jamaica. That's and, it. That's you know, I've been to a lot of islands and I might be biased, but Jamaica is just. <laughs> it's a hard <laughs> thing. Though. I think it's a hard thing. Of that's course, it's beautiful. Good. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it's the way I'm treated when I go. I really will say that. I get treated like a queen. Like, yeah. like you know. <laughs> They recognize royalty over there, you know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Well, thank y'all for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been wonderful. And then I'll send you a copy so you can chop it up, chop and screw, put some uh, text and some music to it and use it as a, a sizzler if you want. Oh, so, awesome. yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, you're welcome. So have a great day and thank, thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.